Let's go back to a problem that we considered near the beginning of these videos. Let's consider an individual who walks for 5 meters in a direction uh, of 30 degrees with the horizontal and then walks for 7 more meters in a direction of 60 degrees above the horizontal. Uh, maybe it might make more sense uh, to say uh, uh, 60 degrees above this horizontal line. Uh, what we want to figure out is what was this person's total displacement from their original position. Uh, another way to put that is how far is their final position from their original position. The question is how far is this person's final position going to be from their original position or what is their overall displacement. So please pause the video and try to answer that question. How far is the person's final position from their original position or what's their overall displacement. Well, one thing we could do is draw the overall displacement vector. Well, here's their original position, and here's where they ended up. The overall displacement vector should point from the initial position to the final position. So here's uh, their overall displacement vector. So here's the overall displacement. Or we might call that the resultant. What we're trying to do here is find our overall displacement vector. If we walk for 5 meters in uh, this direction, making an angle of 30 degrees with the horizontal, and then we walk for 7 meters in this direction, making an angle of 60 degrees with the horizontal, how far is our final position from our initial position? Well, that's represented by this overall vector. Now, what we can't do is just add the 5 and the 7. Uh, we can't just say we're 12 meters from where we started because we weren't walking in the same direction along these two paths. Uh, these two vectors, 5 and 7, are not parallel, um, so we can't simply add those two vectors to each other. Instead, we're going to use our trick of breaking the vectors into components because the components will be parallel to each other, so we can add those components. So let's break these vectors into components. Well, first of all, I need to draw the components of this vector down here with a length of 5. Um, now, we can use any components we like. Um, we can use any axes we like. Usually, uh, it's most convenient to choose horizontal and vertical axes. So let's choose horizontal and vertical axes, and let's draw those axes. Remember that one of your first steps for any problem should be to write down your axes, indicating the positive directions. On most of the previous problems, I've been giving you the axes and the positive directions, but on many of the problems you work on your own, you get to choose your own axes and your own positive directions. Well, I think these are the simplest axes we could choose for this problem and the simplest positive directions. Let's choose these. Now I need to draw a right triangle that uses this vector of length 5 as the hypotenuse. And I know that the legs should be parallel to these axes. So there should be a horizontal and a vertical leg. So here we have that right triangle, and we need to draw the arrows on those components. Here's the x component, and here's the y component. Now we need to figure out how long each of these components are. Well, we know we're going to use this given information and this given angle. And we need to find the opposite and adjacent sides of this triangle. Well, we know that the way to find an adjacent side is by multiplying the hypotenuse by the cosine. Why the cosine? Because of ka. The cosine refers to the adjacent side and the hypotenuse. Uh, and we've gotten into the habit of uh, seeing that this is the formula for finding uh, adjacent sides. If you wanted to, you could start with the idea that the cosine of the angle 
equals the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. Cut. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. And then when you cross multiply, you'll get this equation. Or maybe you're comfortable enough just to start with this equation now. The adjacent side is what we don't know, but we know the length of the hypotenuse. That's 5. So we need to multiply that by the cosine of 30. So we need to find 5 times the cosine of 30. That turns out to be approximately 4.3. Now this is just a length so far, so I'm not going to indicate a sign. Lengths are always positive. So for this adjacent side now, I'm going to label that as 4.3. But since I want this to represent the vector component, I need to also now figure out a correct sign. Notice how the trigonometric functions don't tell us the sign. The trigonometric functions just tell us the length or the magnitude of the adjacent side. Now we have to figure out the sign on our own steam. Well, we've already decided that this vector is pointing to the right, and right is our positive direction. So this component would be positive 4.3. On this problem, I've chosen not to invent new variables to represent um, the triangle here. If you wanted to, you might have just invented some variables for this vector and for its x and its y component. And you might have invented a variable for the second vector and for its x and its y component. And you might have invented uh, a variable for the overall displacement and its x and y components. I decided it might be simpler in this problem not to invent any variables, but just to work with the ideas of adjacent, opposite, and hypotenuse. Uh, but if you wanted to invent new variables to help you with this problem, that would be fine, as long as that worked out for you. Maybe that would even be better. How did we know that this vector was pointing to the right? Well, we can see that the overall vector was pointing up and to the right. So the components are pointing up and to the right. Now we still have to find uh, the vertical component here. Well, that would be represented by the opposite side. Well, we know that the opposite side uh, comes from multiplying the hypotenuse times the sine of the angle. Why the sine? Because of so. The sine refers to the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So. Uh, probably at this point you can go straight to this equation, but if you ever get nervous or forget this equation, remember you can go back to the overall definition of the sine. The sine of the angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, and when you cross multiply, you would get this standard equation. Well now, plugging in, the opposite side is what we're trying to figure out. The hypotenuse here was the overall vector, length 5. We want to multiply that by the sine of 30. 5 times the sine of 30. We can do that in one step on our calculator, and we would get exactly 2.5. So the length of this side is 2.5. Now the trick function is only going to give you a magnitude. On our own now, we have to figure out what the sine is on uh, this component. Well, this component was pointing up, and we chose up as our positive direction. So that would be positive 2.5. And now we've completely broken this vector into its horizontal and vertical components. Uh, the horizontal component of this overall vector of 5 is positive 4.3, and the vertical component is positive 2.5.